Hello everyone, this is John Henry with the Gospel of Christ and welcome back to another episode. If this is your first time on the channel, I invite you to subscribe and click the bell button to be notified each time we upload a new episode. In today's episode, we are going to explore what I call the False Teachers Network. It's nothing new, but I figured that it's important enough for me to share this with you guys, so here we are. It's essentially a quick way to look up a preacher. It's kind of like a, a Google search for preachers and teachers and even musicians that will help you identify whether you are dealing with a false teacher, a false prophet, or a wolf in sheep's clothing. So let's get right to it. Suppose you heard a sermon or some teaching that sounds good to you, but you are not entirely sure whether to open up yourself to this particular teacher by fear of him being a false teacher. And that's very common these days. And by false teacher, I mean he could be a woke preacher, preaching critical race theory, social justice, and even intersectionality. He could be a heavyweight prosperity preacher like Creflo Dollar. He could be a pop culture-ish preacher with a cliche repertoire and extreme illustrations to distract people from the Bible. He could be a faith healer like Todd White or Benny Hinn, who by the way never perform any real healing. Funny, right? Or he could be a straight up hellfire heretics like Kenneth Copeland or Todd Bentley. So you see, you would not know how to even categorize that preacher you heard preaching that quote unquote good sermon and certainly would not know who that preacher is affiliated with by simply listening to him. Here you are on a good old afternoon with your computer or your TV on, the volume is all the way up and your entire family is absorbing the stuff and it's shaping up their understanding of God, their understanding of scripture, their understanding of themselves, of marriage and life and godliness. So this is not a joke by any stretch of the imagination. This is serious. So you ought to be discerning. You need to be careful who you listen to. You need to playlist, probably in your church and quite possibly in your Bible study group, influencing you, your kids, your husband, your wife, your grandma, your grandpa, your auntie, your uncle, or a dear friend of yours. The subtlety is as crafty as the serpents in Genesis chapter 3, not to mention that they also hide in plain sight. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 7 calls them wolf in sheep's clothing. Matthew 7, 15, beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Most of them operate, you know, that they are false teachers, like literally, and yet somehow they are still undetectable by millions of people. Now, how can we know who they are? In Matthew 7, 16, Jesus says, by their foot. That is the most logical and the biblical way to identify them just as a tree. Pretty straightforward. You know, an orange tree is an orange tree because it produces, brings forth oranges, right? Pretty straightforward. Bible tells us also in 1 John chapter 4 that we can identify those false teachers, those false prophets by testing them, testing their teaching, testing their wisdom to know whether or not they are of God. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 1, we read, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but Test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Every believer must test the teaching of the teacher to whom they are exposed. Here's the issue though. Not every believer is equipped with sound understanding and discernment to know how to decipher the cleverness and the guile of these false teachers and their false teaching. That's the problem. Not every believer will know them at first. Some believers, it took them uh, five years, others 10 years, others 15 years, 20 years to find out that their pastor or their favorite teacher, their favorite Bible preacher, you know, has been all along a, a false teacher, which is heartbreaking in a way because you spent all this time listening to that person. That person has been shaping up your understanding of God, your understanding of life, or your understanding of, of pretty much anything you, you, you know from a spiritual standpoint, and to find out that that person is a false teacher. Uh, that's heartbreaking. So there are a few things that we need to do. Like I said, first of all, you need to listen with a biblical and a doctrinal filter. People can quote the Bible all day long, but they could still be anti-biblical because they defy doctrinal biblical authority with their interpretation, doctrinal filter, in order to test the teaching and thus the teacher. Second, you must pray for discernment. 
You pray that the Lord illuminates your mind and your understanding and allows you to see and come across other brothers and sisters that can help you in that area. And third, you can definitely Google their name in the False Teacher Google website. If they come up in that search, then you stay away from them by any means necessary. So what is that False Teacher Google search website I'm talking about? It's not anything new. It's it's pretty well known, but I figured that some people don't know it. It's called the NAR Connection. The NAR Connection is a website that is masterfully well done and well put together resource dedicated to show you all the possible, listen to this, all the possible connections almost every false teacher in America has with one another. For example, let's say you came across some teaching that sounds good and you're not sure that person is a false teacher, right? Although the teaching that you just heard sounds pretty good. It's kind of like a, a, a clock that doesn't work. It's right twice a day, right? It, it's useless. So you might have caught that false teacher at the time of the day where he happens to be right on a particular subject and a particular issue. But in all reality, he is a broken clock. So what do you do? Simple. You take his name and you go to the website called the NAR Connection website. And by the way, NAR stands for the New Apostolic Reformation. I won't have time to elaborate on the NAR in this episode. I will probably do that in a different episode. So just know it's bad news. So you go to this website and you click on the search by name. And when you get there, you'll see this long list of hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of false teachers and false prophets tabulated alphabetically as well. The only thing that's a downside with the website is because they don't actually have a, a search bar, but that's that's not a big deal. If you are on a PC, you can do Control F. It will allow you to search that long list of names. And if you are on a, on a Mac computer, you can do Command F. F, it will also uh, help you uh, search that list. And they are all false teachers and familiars. Familiars are what I call people who are associated or affiliated with false teachers. The danger with that, they won't call these false teachers out because it, it's their friends. They won't call them out. They won't rectify them. They won't help them see clearly what the false teaching is and, and call them out, right? So uh, let, let's, let's navigate th this website a little bit. So you navigate into that little search bar and you type in the name of the pastor, the teacher, or the preacher, or the speaker. Let me type in a name, for instance. Let me type in uh, Carl Lenz. Boom, there he is. He's right there, Carl Lenz. And you guys remember the souls, you know, the back hole with Carl Lenz and, and, uh, and that Muslim lady was, you know, sleeping with his, the pastor of, he was the pastor, I should say, of, a, of the Hillsong Church uh, in New York City, right? So let's, let me type in another name, um, Stephen Furtick. Boom, there you have it. These false teachers where they, they have a following that's like in the millions, they, they create a dedicated page for them and you can navigate through these pages and to get like a full description of them, right? So, uh, you know, that's Stephen Furtick's page, for instance, and they give you a background of him, who he is associated with, all the false teachers that endorse him and he endorses, it, 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 it is crazy. So uh, let's get back. Let me type in another name. Let's type in Joyce Mayer. Boom. <laughs> there you go. And, and of course, because of, of her following, she's going to have a dedicated page. And I think uh, the, the more time whoever developed that, that platform has, they will try and develop a page for every single person in there. And it's a lot of work because it's hundreds of them. Like they are all over the place. And in that list, they have false teachers. They have woke teachers. They have prosperity preachers. They, they have the whole thing, the whole shebang. They have new age uh, of false prophets in there. You know, they have like all kinds of false anti-biblical, anti-gospel, anti-doctrinal teachers right there on that list. So what you could do, like I said, you, you listen with a biblical and doctrinal filter. Second of all, you pray for discernment. You look for other brothers and sisters to help you discern these preachers. And third of all, you look you look them up. Dr. Owen Strand said something interesting the other day. He said, and I quote, the teachings of Hillsong, Bethel, Jesus culture, and elevation include unbiblical Christology, grave soaking, and the prosperity gospel. In love for Christ's flock, don't sing them in corporate worship. Close quote. He is right. 
We, we can't sing these songs made by these groups, by these bands in, in, in our corporate worship because they're so deeply rooted and affiliated with false teachers and radical teachings that it, it, it's impossible to imagine anything that they produce that's not touched by that unbiblical Christology like Dr. Owen Strand said. Let's find the founder of Hillsong, Brian Houston. He is on there, and when you type his name, you'll find him. And when you're a heavyweight, like I said earlier, in the false teacher echelon, you get a personal link that shows who endorses you and who you endorse, which is another layer of information for you that tells you who else to stay away from. And and it, it's unbelievable. If you're looking at his page, you're looking at his profile, this is his entire profile, and these are the people associated with him. And I've also realized that the mainstream media simply filled up to the neck with so many false teachers, even more than faithful teachers. Now, I might be wrong, but maybe by a small margin. For instance, if you take uh, John MacArthur's YouTube channel, or the Grace to You YouTube channel, with 489,000 subscribers. If you take Ligon Years Ministries YouTube channel with 293 YouTube subscribers, if you take Justin Peters, for instance, YouTube channel with 98,000 subscribers, and you add on top of that Paul Wash's YouTube channel, which is the Heart Cry Ministry YouTube channel with 137 uh, subscribers. When you add all of these ministries together, you get a total of a little over 1 million subscribers, which means all these ministries put together only make up a little over 1 million subscribers. Now, I'm not trying to compare a, a, a result in ministry based on a number, based on analytics. I'm only showing you the media potential reach of these ministries as opposed to someone like Joel Osteen, right? Who's a false teacher. And his YouTube channel alone has 1.94 million subscribers, which is twice as much as these guys I just mentioned put together. So this is really concerning. And it's just my analysis. There might be more faithful than the hundreds and hundreds of false teachers represented here on the NAR network, but their reach is not as much, right? And in the future, we'll be doing some uh, video commentaries on, on some of these false teachers teaching to show you how dangerous and deceitful they are. They have bad theology on biblical Christianity.